Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we'll be covering the final uh, scheduling algorithm of OS which is the round robin. So this is a very famous algorithm and many OSs actually do follow this process. So the concept here is let's say you have uh, three processes, right? So each of these processes would get three seconds of time, let's say for uh, according to this example. So they would get three seconds of time for their uh, to get the CPU, so do their work. Then after three seconds, the next process comes in and this goes back into the queue. So this works for three seconds, then this goes back into the queue again. This goes uh, works for three seconds, goes back into the queue. So this is the process and uh, so there would be definitely a context which every time quantum. So let's just look into an example to better understand what's happening here. So initially we have P4. So P4 gets into the queue first. So P4 has an arrival time of zero. So it uh, goes into the queue first and it starts working at the zero second. So as I said, so as the question says that we have a time quantum of three seconds. So P4 would be working for three seconds. That means P4 would have a remaining burst time of two seconds. So in between these three seconds, what's happening here? So at the first second, we have P2 coming into the RAM. So P2 goes into the queue. And at the second second, we have P3, which also goes into the queue, right? So uh, when we are at the three second mark, we are done with P4. So P4 would be cut from the queue and would get back as it still has some remaining stuff to do, right? So it goes back into the queue again. Now we have P2. So P2 as the time quantum suggests, so it would work for 3 seconds, so it would have a remaining of 1 second. So in between these 3 seconds, so at the 4th second we have P1, so P1 enters into the queue and we are done with P2, right? So then we have, uh, so P2 goes back into the queue again, then we have P3, so P3 has a burst time of 9 seconds, so P3 works for three more seconds and it would have a remaining of six seconds so p3 is cut goes back into the queue now we have to work with p4 so p4 had a remaining of two seconds right so p4 as a time quantum is of three seconds but p2 has two seconds so it would work for only two seconds so 11 and p4 would be done so it wouldn't go back into the queue again because it's complete so its task is complete right so then we have p1 so p1 has a burst time of eight seconds so time quantum is three so p1 works for three seconds 14 second and p1 would have a remaining of five seconds then P1 is done, so P1 goes back into the queue again. Then we have P2. So P2 has a remaining of one second, right? So P2 it works for one second, so 15 seconds. Then we are done with P2, right? So we can, so it doesn't have to go back into the uh, queue again. So this is not necessary. So then we have to work with P3. So P3 from previously we had a remaining of six seconds so p3 works for three more seconds that means at 18 second p3 would have a remaining of three seconds so p3 goes back into the queue again p1 so p1 had a remaining of five seconds so p1 works for three more seconds so 18 plus 3 that's 21 and P1 has a remaining of two seconds, right? Then, so P1 is done, P1 goes back into the queue again, then we are working with P3. P3 only had three seconds at the time quantum is three, so that's absolutely perfect. So 24 seconds, P3 is done. So P3 is not going back into the queue again because uh, its task is done. So P1 with its final two seconds, and at 26 seconds, P1 is done. 
meaning all the processes are done so this is the whole process of how you work with round robin and let's just look into the final two tables and fill those up so p1 would have a turnaround time of so p1 comes into the cpu at four seconds this comes at four seconds but p1 leaves at the 26 second right so 26 minus 4 that's 22 seconds so it has a turnaround time of 22 seconds okay uh, so this would be waiting time <coughs> and it had a burst time of 8 seconds right so 22 minus 8 is the 8 that is 14 seconds then we have p2 which came into the ram at the first second and p2 left at the 15 second right so 15 minus 1 so it had a uh, turnaround time of 14 seconds it had the burst time of 4 so a 10 second waiting time p3 so p3 came into the cpu at the second second However, it left at the 24th second, right? So 22 seconds of turnaround time. And the burst time of this is 13 seconds of waiting time. And finally, we have P4, which came at the 0 second, and P4 left at the 11 second. So 11 seconds of turnaround time and 5 seconds of burst time. So had to wait for six seconds so uh, from this you can see that there is a lot of waiting time for every process right and the turnaround time is also very high so uh, one of the problems of uh, round robin is if the time quantum is very low there would be a lot of context switches meaning there would be a lot of waiting time however if the quantum is very big let's say we have a quantum of five right so there would be less context switches however there would be one process actually hogging all the cpu resources and if we have like a very big time quantum so there would uh, this algorithm would act more of as a first come first serve rather than an actual round robin algorithm so uh, the concept here is that we need to have a balance between uh, the time quantums so there is not uh, too many switches or the algorithm acts as FCFS so the trick here is to uh, have these processes work 80% of its like 80% of its time in the in its first quantum so this is the process and in your exams you would be given a time quantum however round robin takes a lot of time to solve so it's better that you try to skip it but if there's any uh, if there isn't any other options then nothing you can do but round robin is very easy you need to practice it a bit but that's about it for this algorithm and hope you guys like the video please do subscribe and hit the like button thank you